Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jay Bear and, and Rami. Rami. And we are Morba Chats. In today's episode, we're going to talk about failures and our lessons learned. We're going to do a little bit interesting, different way that we normally do our episodes. We're going to start talking, first of all, one story at a time. I got three stories that I want to talk to you guys. I'm going to start with the first one. It's one of the most recent ones that I would consider a failure. It was our uh, time at Mangos. Real quick. Pause. Mm. Just want to preface this real quick that these stories are all mm. catered towards the promoter who wants to learn from our failures to make their events better, right? So for those of you guys who don't know, this season is all about the promoters. Yeah. With a little hints and other things for, for everybody you, else. Yeah, for all the regular people, like for, so you can see the behind the scenes of what goes on in our crazy minds. Yeah. All right, Juanito, the first story you said regarded mangoes. Mangoes. On the Edge event, a mangoes that happened uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. A lot longer one. A month ago? <laughs> two months ago? Something like that. I mean, when we, we don't talk about mangoes. The person, when, when you post this, he, he posts this like in three months, and it's like, oh, well, this happened four months. No, this is going to be posted. It's going to be posted. What is it? What live. is today, Miss Producer? <laughs> October 10, right? This is going to be posted. Wow, you just dated us right now. October 5th. 16th, no later than October 16th. See, now people are going to know like what days we record. They're gonna people come. know we don't do this live, bro. <laughs> I know, but they don't know what days we record. They're going to come crash our recording. Okay, come talk about, come talk, uh, let's, let's talk about, what are we talking about? <laughs> mangoes. Mangoes event. So, well, we had an event that happened at uh, the nightclub Mangoes that you guys might be familiar with. It's on Midtown. Um, we had a very interesting setup that we had uh, organized with the promoters, the uh, directors of that place, the owners. Yeah, so um, why, why don't we take a step back and talk about what our vision for the event was. That's what I'm saying. We had an interesting setup that we had talked about beforehand. Okay. The original original vision. Yes. So we were meant to uh, have an event on the outside, uh, in, in between patio, between the two dance floors, with uh, the use of the side floor which is typically the salsa room as an extra room and we had the whole thing set up we're gonna dj in one room we mm-hmm. had performances coming up mm-hmm. it was gonna be live there was an event on the street that we uh, were gonna be a part of it was also second saturday which was usually a really big event and made time for people to attend and walk by so we figured this would be a good chance and we can use it and uh mark it really well uh unfortunately things happened quick question miss producer did that sound like something exciting that you want to go to I thought it that was. Si- that silence there means no. <laughs> so uh, let me re- let me rephrase what Juanito just said in an exciting and marketable fashion. So before we get there, yes. this was an event that was actually organized and set up by Rami. So now just he knows all the details of what was supposed to happen. Okay. All right. That, that's good to know. All right. So, all right. So the way that it was supposed to happen was imagine you're going to be outside an outdoor patio where there's seeds, ch- chairs, cocktail tables, a bar outside, and also some fireplaces and couches. And then imagine that there were two other doors or two other rooms where you could actually have party music, uh, maybe a different style of music. I think we were going to do some bachata, kizomba in there. And then we even had a bigger outdoor area, which is the parking lot, which we were going to renovate into a gigantic, almost like a festival fair. The parking thing. lot was not part of the original deal. Yeah, I've skipped. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that was still like what was supposed to be created. So a lot of outdoor stuff, a lot of furniture stuff, a lot of experiences of being outdoors and just feeling good. Where if you if it was too hot, you could go indoors and get the club vibe. While at the same time, you get kind of a resort vibe. So the lesson on here, the failure that happened is the failure of coordination with the owners. What ended up happening on the day of the event, the owners forgot that they had forgot they had another event on the same night uh, that they had rented out the main uh, indoor patio. Pretty much area. all the spaces we planned to use and all the furniture that was that we were going to be using was used for someone else. <laughs> yes. So we didn't have access to any of these things. On top of that, the whole area that was blocked off by this private event, or no private, by public event, that uh, was supposedly only 21 and up, so we didn't have direct access through the patio to get into our rooms. People that, that were in their events were not allowed to cross into our event. And in order to find us, you literally had to go looking for this little door in the side entrance to be able to get into what we had going on. Is what he's saying making sense to you right now? It does. If you're from Sacramento. Well, uh, what I want to say is that what he's saying, if it makes sense or if it doesn't, that's pretty much what that, that, that day was. Like, there are so many things happening that not not two pe- not more, blah, 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 blah. See, that's exactly what it. what he's saying making sense? That's exactly it. Like, that night, way too many people were, like, hands in the kitchen trying to cook 
No one knew exactly what was happening. Cooks in, cooks in the kitchen. Cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. Too many hands in the pot for the cookie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's all craziness. It's all craziness. Someone is saying to do something, and then someone, like at the same moment in a different room, is saying something uh, opposite. Mm-hmm. So that's really what was happening to our to our event at Mangoes. Yes. Everything we pre- we pre- prepared for and planned did not happen. When did we find out? An hour and a half before it happened. Yeah. An hour and a half before people showed up. When did we start setting up? Right when we got there, an hour before people showed we up. We actually showed up earlier than we were supposed to because we found out about this. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then all the entry points and stuff that we planned, the way to get the people feeling good, all that went out the window. So in this event, pretty much anything that could go wrong as a promoter, as a coordinator, happened. Yeah. So the lesson learned here is, you know, first of all, I always figure out a contract with the person you're working with. Mm-hmm. That might be something uh, to look at. Uh, making sure that you know exactly what you're getting in the agreement. And um, the other thing is, you know, you always have to give people a chance. If yeah. they tell you, hey, we're going to do this event here, you got to be like, well, we can try it and see how it works. If it doesn't work, then unfortunately, it's not going to work the next time either. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way, the way it is in this business. Uh, as, as, at least as far as I'm concerned, I'm not the rest of the team, but I feel like we shouldn't be doing business with this uh, event anymore or this venue anymore. Um, at least not until we get something a little more clear. Um, other lessons learned from this would be uh, how to think on the spot. Yeah. You know, we, we had to like reimagine the entire scene and start doing more things outside on the back, outside patio. Um, we had to change the DJ setup because we didn't have what we wanted to do and we had to adjust it slightly. And uh, so I want to actually give a specific example of how we adjusted immediately uh, just to put more context into it. Because I uh, right now, like even just listening to what we're talking about, it's very confusing for me, and I was there. Can you guys tell that he likes listening to me? What? Yeah. That I like what? <laughs> Mr. Producer, what did he say about me? Yo, mama. No, I'm <laughs> um, um, so, so the context, so we're, let's backtrack real quick. So we got there an hour and a half before the event started. Juan said earlier that there was a 21 and up uh, event happening, which closed off half of the perimeter that we were supposed to have access to. Our events are always... T- uh, family friendly, right? Dance on the Edge. This is a Dance on the Edge event. I'm just going to say it right there. Family friendly. And because they closed off half of the perimeter, we couldn't use, we couldn't get people to our spot because they had to go through the 21 and up please people's spot first, right? That's how it initially was. So imagine you brought your kids out or someone just turned 18 or 19 and you're trying to get to our event, but the security guards are like, nope, you can't get in there, 21 and up only. But we told you you could get there. Right. That's the biggest issue that we were having. And so what did we do? Rami came to the rescue. Yeah. Rami came. To Heck the yeah. I came to the rescue. Um, that's yeah. just me. You know. Um, so what we did was we identified what was our goal. Are we first off? Are we still going to have our event? That's always we, the first thing. That's the first thing you got to know. Are you still going to do it even though it's not exactly what you wanted or are you going to give up? If you give up right now, I'm going to tell you stop what you're doing because you suck. If you give up for any of your events, don't even think about being a promoter because that means you're soft and that you cannot be trusted to have more events for other people. I'm going to disagree on that. Well, you suck. Um, There's um, always a time where you need to quit something. We talked about this in other episodes. Yeah, but if you give up on something like this, like you're, you're too weak. Yeah. Um, and so when we agreed, when we committed that we we're still going to have an event, we identified what's the biggest issue right now. Letting people know how to get to our event. And then the second part was, now that they know that our event is still happening, exactly how are they going to do it, you know, practically? Where are they going to have to walk? Who are they going to have to talk to? Who are they going to have to be um, introduced to to be able to get to our event? So what we did is we first talked to the owner of the, of the venue. Like, hey, we have our people coming in, and they're getting stopped by security. What's going on? And then from there talk to security found, and then we found out that the owner of mangoes actually didn't have the say so of how people get to our venue so we had to find a person who really does eventually we ended up talking to the captain of the police force that was on site to actually create space and make that make, make that happen so you notice how once we identified that there's a commitment a commitment to continue we had to identify what was our goal our goal was to get people there, so we had to make sure people got there. The story got way too long, dude. Yeah, but it's still big. <laughs> so that that was the lesson learned, the big lesson learned on this guy. And um, obviously, there's a lot more lessons that happen throughout the night, but we don't want to get too far into that. I had three stories, but I'm going to cut it just to two. Okay. The second story that I want to tell you guys. Actually, is no, no. We're going to say the third story, but the third story is actually just going to be on our Instagram, your Instagram. 
Was it? Do you get a lot of followers on your Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll put it on my Instagram. <laughs> Get, uh, so like if you saw our my Instagram a week ago, <laughs> then you you know what what we're talking about. All right, so what's the second story? The you second story about? I want to talk about is our biggest failure, and it's probably the one that we learned the most from. Mm-hmm. This was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. This happened uh, the city of Sparks, Nevada, actually, or just outside of Sparks. It Nevada. wasn't in Sparks, Nevada. It was at Pyramid Lake, right. which was actually an Indian reserve land. Correct. A Native American reservation. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Politically correct here. Um, there, uh, we had an event set up there with uh, another friend. It wasn't our event. We were just some of the... Um, we were we were part of the core team. Correct. Mm-hmm. Among, along with a few other people. It wasn't just us two. And uh, we had been planning this event for maybe like nine months, something like that, maybe a year. For for We actually planned it for a little over a year. A little over and a year. so what this event was, it's called Dance... Uh, Dance is Extreme Challenge. Yes, Dance is Extreme Challenge. And what it was is that we were outdoors n- near a gigantic lake... And almost a, like a desert, right? Yeah, it was, it was a, near the desert. So it's called Pyramid Lake, if you want to find that location. Mm-hmm. We were at Pyramid Lake. And the entire purpose of it was to get people outside of the indoors festival experience for mm-hmm. dancers and to get them outside where they're actually doing activities that are not really dance-related. Quick side note, this is Pyramid Lake in Nevada, not Pyramid Lake in California. There's a Pyramid Lake in California? By LA. By the Grapevine. Oh, that's not Pyramid Lake. That's called Pyramid Lake. All right, let's keep on moving. So right. the um, the event was meant to be a vacation. So as a vacation for dancers, mm-hmm. meaning you're not there to take lessons or do workshops. You're not there to dance social social dancing all night. You were there to enjoy the outside event and to create a series of team bonding uh, situations. Yes. We had a few teams scheduled to sh- show up and they were going to be competing against each other in survivor-like Competitions. They weren't exactly that extreme, but they were uh, along those yeah. lines. Also, food was all inclusive. Yep. Uh, you could, uh, you if you paid the extra package, you would have gotten a free tent with mattress, bat, beds, and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then mother nature happened. Yeah, yeah. Ish hit the fan. So first, first of all, uh, we we were at this event like a week before setting up. We built the dance floor. We put the tents up. We had like this whole infrastructure. This is a huge event. It wasn't a small thing. It was a big deal. A lot of people paid ahead of time to get the. To I get think we there. had about how many miles of square footage should we have? I don't remember. I think I think we had like it was it was like legit miles. We were talking about miles of space where people were going to be at. Yes, and we had a I want to say probably about three hundred to four hundred people that were supposed to be at this event. Yeah. Some, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, a few days before, uh, I decided to look at the forecast and I'm looking at the phone. I'm like, oh, hey, um, this thing says there's going to be a huge sandstorm happening exactly the weekend when this event is supposed to happen. That was the first thing that happened that event. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, the day before the event, we actually had an amazing, sunny, beautiful day. Yeah. And then when the day started, the sandstorm kicked in. So uh, I'm going to tie this into the first story where we talked about commitment, right? Are we still going to do it? Are we not? We had a meeting. We had a meeting while we were still setting up. Do we want to do this event? Um, and we, we weighed the pros and the cons. And what did we, we ended up deciding, yeah, let's do it. Because we didn't spend all this amount of time trying to set it up to, not, to just not do it. It was the very first of its kind. And we wanted to just try and get it done. Yep. <laughs> Is it supposed to be like the cue to, like, for me to start talking again? So yes. um, <laughs> the, then we, we decided to continue on with the event. The event started off decently okay during the day. We had yeah, people, people were coming up, in, set up their tents. We had yeah. all the tents for the VIP set up. Yeah, um, we had the the lesson for the day. Uh, there wasn't supposed to be any competitions the first day. It was just kind of a meeting, just a uh, welcoming orientation. Mm-hmm. We but we already we like we already started experiencing issues. People didn't know that we we're like on a desert mm-hmm. or beach area or whatever. So their cars were getting stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, we needed to tow people in and out of the locations. And it became an actual challenge uh, just to be there, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then we had issues of food. like The uh, vendors were not showing up on time. Because like they're trying to get through and uh, mm-hmm. they're... Uh, Finding the venue itself wasn't necessarily the easiest way either. Exactly. We did not organize not the way communication. Finding well. Yeah. And then, and then, boom, the night day dates. of, the, oh, actually it was a night, yeah, the night, oh, it was really bad. So I just remember I had 30 minutes of sleep that night. Um, yeah. I and I didn't have arms. a blanket and I was freezing because you're in the desert. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about the night real quick. The sandstorm kicked in really badly. So it picked up, it started being to the point that if you stand in front of it, it would sting like every time it hit you. And 
Yes. I don't remember that. It was, it was that bad. He's soft. I don't know no. what you were. It was that bad. And mm -hmm. so people started cowering. Obviously, they're going to get into their cars or mm -hmm. getting into their tents. And the sand, the, the sandstorm started getting stronger and they started knocking down the tents. Oh, yeah. Flipping like tents. Tents were breaking. Yeah. Um, um, oh, actually, I did remember that there, there were some small pieces of shards of glass in the sand. So that was a big concern of getting people out of there ASAP. Yeah. Um, and then keep going. Uh, we, we did continue the night a little bit. The sandstorm slowed down slightly towards mm -hmm. the end of the night. We had some music and some dancing out there. But most people had either already left or they were just kind of staying on their tents. Mm -hmm. uh, probably 90% of the tents were destroyed. How were many people were there? Used anymore? At that point? Yeah. Like 100? No, we had a lot more than that. 200? We had, yeah, we had about two or 300 people still there in that morning. Yeah. So imagine this. Uh, it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. People did not sleep well. People were sh were cold. They don't have food because we promised that to provide food for them, and they're looking at you and your team of four people, <laughs> four people yeah. to provide food for. And hundreds. guess what? There was one person missing. Do we want to go there? No, we're not gonna okay, go there. Okay, so, so imagine your team With minus one person. Minus one, and that person is very important <laughs> to get anything now, done. Now, the other thing that happened yeah. is the people that were supposed to be having the the uh, fridge, fridge cart or the people that had the... The vendors with the food and the ice, they, were, they, they also went MIA. Because they went and, home, because there was a sandstorm. They didn't want to stick around. Exactly, but they left their, their, uh, their uh, the food there. So what did we do? We had hundreds of people hungry and very angry, and we're like, are we going to get a riot? <laughs> How do we open this thing? And so then we yeah. ended up uh, getting a bolt cutter. No, nope, we didn't do that. Mm -mm, we didn't break any laws. <laughs> I, oh no, no. What we did is we ninjaed it, yeah, uh, where okay. we found a way to unscrew the lock because it, it was a really, really big lock. It was like you legit need a bolt cutter to open it. But it was the latch itself was you could screw it off. Mm -hmm. So we unscrewed it. Um, we it couldn't up. reach the vendors. We tried to call them. We tried to find them. Couldn't reach them. And we were just like, we need to get to the food. We need to get to the food. And we were all, I had 30 minutes of sleep. How much sleep did you have? Two hours. Okay, so we were all lacking sleep and everyone was just starving. So we fired up the grills and got it going. Mm -hmm. And was, I, I, go ahead. That was probably the most successful part of the event. Like, yeah. Just, just getting everybody there, getting mm -hmm. like all the volunteers actually helping. We had like a, at least eight people cooking at the same time. And yeah, you don't remember that? Bro, we only had Antoine we, we, he, he was in charge, for sure. He was the person that was ahead of it, but he had like a bunch of people flipping. Or doing yeah, yeah, we, we did have that. We had our friends who weren't even part of the group yeah, or volunteer group. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the thing I also very, very much remember that morning was a lot of grumbling of people like, this is horrible, this, this sucks, I want my money this back. food sucks, they're just grilling chicken and giving some bread and salad on the side or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Uh, like yeah expectations were not met and then and then from the store the vendors uh, with the food they came back and so I remember sitting down there like just dead tired trying to eat and Juan and everyone in our team was around us and then you just hear like what the hell did this you know and an old really loud pitch and I just remember jumping straight up and like just running straight over them to try and calm them down and explain that we didn't break anything mm -hmm. and that we we you know like you can put it back together the yeah way luckily for me i found i'm very likable for older people <laughs> <laughs> so like once i explained nothing broke they're like oh okay and then you know they started you know um yeah being their cheery self again so at, the, at that point after all this had happened we decided that it was time to cut the event there was no way that we were going to continue the sandstorm was not going to let down it was nope. going to keep going yep um all the VIP tents had broken down completely. Yep. And everybody's tents, like I said before, they were almost broken. So um, they cut the event, everybody left, and everybody, uh, we uh, set up another event down in Reno with uh, the help of uh, the, uh, BB, the promoter there, yeah. to do um, another social dancing then for the people that were there that had paid for the event for free for them. And it was you know, an okay event, just a you know, standard normal social night, nothing too exciting. Um, and uh, the biggest thing after that was people you know, demanding for their money back. Yeah, and not being able to give that back because well, the money was Mother paid the event. Well, first off, no, no. So if you if you look at legalities, um, you could always get your money back if and only if that uh, the producer or whoever's creating it did not fulfill what they said they would fulfill for you as a, you know a consumer. However, if Mother Nature t decides to take part in this, then that means your money ain't coming back. 
So a lot of people actually did not get their money back for this. There's still a bunch of people that have <laughs> contacted me from time to time. They're like, so what happened? I never got my money back about this. Unfortunately, we were not in charge yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. So we cannot help anybody on that regard. So we were never able to help them. And uh, the sad, saddest thing of this was just this amazing event that could have been something wonderful. Big dream of ours, yeah. Uh, it just went down. and Burned down in flames. It could never be yeah. done again. But, but uh, like, that was a very long story. Like, there's so many more stories we could say about that weekend. Uh, but, you know, like... It what failed. It was a it was a gigantic failure. There's nothing else you could say about it. It was a big failure, but we learned so much from it. Keep in mind, this, I think at that point you were 19. I was, and I I mm -hmm. was making decisions for hundreds of people. Yeah, I, I think I was like 24 at the time, something like that. Are you five years older than me? How old are you now? I thought you're four years older than me. Oh yeah. wait, you are five years older than me. Something like that. Okay. 23, 24. Okay. Um. So we were really skinny folks <laughs> back no, then. No, we were. <laughs> And, and so, you know, that, you know, we didn't know anything about events. It's actually one of the first events we produced. We were part of Bachata Conmigo at that point, I think. We were starting up, yeah. Starting it up. So you know, we had some idea, but, you know, this was a huge leap for both of us to get, get up there and start taking a little more charge mm -hmm. on different mm -hmm. things. From the organization perspective to yeah. the um, fire, uh, fire, what's it, what's it called? No fire burning when you try to put out a fire. Mm -hmm. um, quick responses, right? Quick responses, so, all that stuff. Yeah, so so the biggest thing that I think that we learned, or I learned, all right, I'm going to just say what I learned, and then you can share what you learned. Yep. So the biggest thing I learned was make sure everyone knows exactly the hierarchy of information. Who are we going to to know what's going on? Do I have to talk to Juan for all the cars that got stuck in the sand, or do I have to talk to Rami? I need to know immediately. That's the most important thing. It's just communication and funneling that to everyone else. What did you learn, Juan? I learned that, uh, at that point in the moment that Romy was going to be an event promoter and an event organizer and a coordinator. Okay. Well, <laughs> we had a very, very interesting episode today. We, we spoke about two ep two stories of failures. A third one's going to be happening on my Instagram pretty what? soon. What? Um, and the failures are always about learning and being better for the future. So first failure, when things just don't work out, you need to know if you can commit. And then the second part is you need to be able to communicate and make sure everyone on the, on the same team has the same thoughts. And one thing that we learned from those things is uh, having a backup plan. Yes. So that's our episode for this week. We hope you really enjoyed this episode and we will see you on the next one.